industrialized countries, especially in Europe and North America, have built their wealth on destroying nature on a massive scale in order to extract wood, minerals, and other natural resources in extremely wasteful ways and without caring for the future. They have been so successful that many animal and plant species have disappeared over the past 50 years and one in three species is at the risk of extinction in the future if they continue on this path. If these countries continue to destroy animals and plants as now, this will threaten the very survival of humans on the planet due to increasing threats of disease transmission, risk of food shortages and more difficult access to fresh water as water cleaning plants are at risk of disappearing in some places. The disappearance of a few critical species, such as bees, could also have a cascading effect, leading in turn to the disappearance of many plant species, in turn leading to many animal species struggling to find food. These risks are well known by the governments of industrialized countries, having been documented for a long time. Yet, just as with carbon, industrialized countries do not want to curb their destruction of nature because this would mean a loss of wealth and changing their way of life. None of these countries' leaders want to act decisively about it because doing so would make them unpopular, threaten their re-election and force them to open a debate about the level of inequalities in their country. Instead of seriously reducing the destruction, their destruction of nature, industrialized countries have thus come up with what they claim is an alternative, biodiversity credits. What are biodiversity credits? Industrialized countries claim that some actions such as attempting to restore or recreate natural habitats such as a forest or a wetland that they have destroyed can compensate for new destruction taking place elsewhere. Just as with carbon, some project developers will look for land where to try and uh, recreate or restore natural habitats. They will either buy the land or buy the right to use the land for the project. Once their project is underway, they will start issuing so-called biodiversity credits. Think of biodiversity credits as pieces of paper representing a promise to restore a natural ecosystem on a given size of land for a given number of years. These credits can be bought and sold. There are many problems with this approach. First, it considers that your land, which is your heritage, your birthright and your home is just an asset that can be sold for temporary financial gain to the detriment of future generation. Secondly, the credits will be bought by corporations that will claim that it gives them the right to continue destroying nature elsewhere. Thirdly, the habitat that is being restored is not always hosting the same species as the habitat that will be destroyed. So you could destroy an area that holds a type of bird and restore another area that holds monkeys. And yet, industrialized nations will consider that one action has compensated the other. This is because their main goal is to make it easy and cheap to compensate rather than ensure that nature does not disappear. Such projects have existed for many years and most of them have failed to recreate the natural ecosystems that they, are, they aimed at. This is because it is very difficult to recreate ecosystems and because our knowledge of nature and restoration is incomplete. We still do not know many of the millions of plants, insects and animal species, nor do we fully understand the complex webs of relations between them. But even if we were able to recreate the nature that we have destroyed, this approach would only displace destruction, not reduce it by restoring in one place in order to destroy in another. However, as most restoration projects fail, the result is that this destruction continues at an alarming rate, threatening the future of the next generation. In addition, these actions create the same issues for local communities as carbon credits, as they require similarly a lot of land and attract greedy project developers continuously looking for land that is cheap or that they can grab for free. As an example, in Malaysia, some project developers are trying to sign a deal with the regional government where they would buy the rights for carbon and the natural resources of a big forest for the next 100 years. 
despite the communities living in the forest not having been properly or fully consulted. Crucially, while this type of project has existed for a long time, new international agreements and national laws are now about to facilitate and promote these type of projects, leading to a tremendous increase in the search for land. Pieces of land the size of small countries are currently already being sold without the local populations being always or properly consulted or having agreed to the proposed sale and land use changes. It is expected that millions of people could be directly evicted and dispossessed by these new laws, many of which will be indigenous people who have protected their lands for millennia.